Hey guys, welcome back. All right, so in the last video um, we installed Python 3.5, I, I showed you how to open up the Python editor that came that comes with the Python installation called Idle. Um, some people in the Python community they you know they brag, oh yeah, Python has that Idle and it's an editor and it comes with it and it's free and all this crap. There's editors for free all over the internet nowadays. So even some of the paid editors, like you know the really expensive ones like Microsoft's Visual Studio or even um, the ReSharper guys who did uh, PyCharm, they even have free versions as well. But um, what, what I want to do is um, just show you an issue that has sprung up with 3.5 and um, trying to run idle. And, and I'm using Windows 8.1, so I'm not sure if this is just something set up and messed up on my end or what. But every time I open up the um, idle and the way that I showed you guys in the previous video, it actually locks up and then becomes completely unresponsive where I can't even in the task I, I can't do anything um, and you can see that you know this is idle and I just can't close it so it, it's ridiculous um, as far as I've been able to figure out I have to actually restart the machine so what we're gonna do instead and the reason why um, idle is, is a really not very good editor anyway and it, it, the quicker we can actually use a more uh, industrialized editor um, you know a, t a tool that you would most likely find at, at a, a, a workplace um, and you know certain things like um, autocomplete and uh, all these advanced features that typically paid editors have um, that is all free and available on an editor called um, Atom which is an open source project meaning that it's just it's free completely because it's the um, entire code base that makes up the program was just created by people volunteering their time um, some programmers just like you and I just contributing and and making a product and and to be honest with you it's pretty cool um, some of the tools that it has and um, I'll just go ahead and explain really quick like here's one of them that looks really nicely uh, or really nice it's the Python tools for Atom and like I said Atom's completely free so you can download it for Windows Mac Linux and um, you can see here that it's doing like some autocomplete. That's what I was telling you, where it automatically finds what it is that you're trying to type and um, has the automatic uh, formatting. So you can see that seems like a uh, cool tool. And it's also saying it goes along really nicely with this autocomplete. And I really like autocomplete in Visual Studio. So um, this autocomplete saves a lot of time from having to type out stuff. So it prevents, you know, mistyping and stuff if you just make use of it as much as you can. So anyway the quicker we can just you know as programmers if you're just starting out to just you know jump into an environment like this instead of using something like idle that's been around for um, you know god knows how long at least probably 10 years or so and hasn't really advanced too much in, in those 10 years so um, anyway guys uh, th that is the decision uh, that, that I'm making going forward with the tutorial um, however if you don't want to install this you can still do your coding in idle assuming you don't have 8.1 and the same problems that I have where you can't close it once you open it um, but you can actually write all your code in, in this editor if you want but it's just not very good like I said um, so anyway guys let's go ahead and, and get started with how we install and set up Atom for our Python installation alright guys um, so in order to get Atom installed let's go ahead and head over to the website where we need to go I'm on Windows I'm using 8.1 um, so I'm going to use the Windows installer. However, I'm going to also provide uh, the, a link not only to this page but also to another page where you can see all the different source code versions for the you know Apple um, for if you're on a Mac or Linux. So um, most of you guys are probably on Windows, so this is where we're going to go to install. So let's go ahead and click download there. All right, now you guys might get this uh, message that Adam set up .exe. Just I'm disregarding that. I mean, you can do what you want with that, but um, Windows has this thing like if you don't pay a bunch of money and get your um, your software signed off on by like a Norton company or some other sort of antivirus company which costs hundreds of dollars then Windows um, gives your, their users like this untrusted thing because um, you know they, they do it as a, a means of protection at least that's what they say anyway I think they do it for money but that's just my opinion so anyway, that's it's quite annoying uh, with that. So anyway, it's gonna go ahead and put that in your downloads folder. So from Chrome, I can say show in folder, and then we'll go ahead and run the setup. It does a little cool thing here. Um, so this will take a few minutes, and I'm gonna be just pausing the video so I don't bore you guys if my computer is slower than yours. All right, guys. So after Adam is installed, you'll see that it does create a desktop icon for you that you can just double click, 
And um, Adam is going to remember the last project that you have. And, and we're going to get into how we structure our projects and everything. Uh, but for right now, um, this is actually going to be holding, uh, holding, I'm sorry, opening some older projects that I have because I've already had Adam installed and it, it remembers that. So um, if I want to remove those folders in case you have any, you can just say remove project folder. And I'm going to go ahead and close these files so it doesn't confuse anything. All right, guys, and um, so what we want to do is first install autocomplete Python here, and this is this um, package I was showing you guys earlier where it's going to try to automatically figure out what it is that you're trying to write in Python, and it can make things a lot easier. Now, one of the things I haven't really researched is whether or not this is going to work in the latest version of Python. Um, in the open source community, sometimes we can be plagued with bugs, but it's not really going to deter our tutorial too much if this doesn't work. So um, let's just hope for the best and see if it does, okay? So... Um, the first thing you do in Atom is you want to you want to go over to the left hand side and click File, and then we're going to go to Settings, and Settings most likely will be on this screen. But you're going to go down to Install, and then we want to put in the name of the package, which is Autocomplete Python. And if you click uh, Enter um, or click on the Packages button, and this thing will search. And Autocomplete Python should be the first option. It has like 33,000 downloads, so we're going to go ahead and try that. So just click Install. Alright guys, so that is now installed. Now, let's go ahead and um, discuss how we're going to use Atom and how we're going to run our programs in this tutorial. What I want to do is I want to use Atom to write all our Python code, but then I'm going to use the command line, and it can be the command line whether you're in Mac or Linux or Windows. In my case, it's Windows, but we're going to use the command line to actually run the Python program that we wrote in Sublime. So a Python program is just a file, just like an image um, is a file. Uh, Python code is, is, you know, it can be multiple files or it can just be one single file with a bunch of Python code in it. Um, so really our project is just going to consist of where is it that we're going to be storing our Python code. So let's go ahead and, and discuss that now. I'm going to go ahead and um, for this tutorial series I'm going to open my file explorer and I just have a tendency to put my project files inside projects. So let's go ahead and create a new folder and um, we'll call this uh, Python 3.5 tutorial. And then all the Python code is going to go inside of here. So let's go ahead and look at, at what we're talking about. We can close our settings now if we want to click X and close that out. And what I'm going to do is create a new file. So go to File, New File. Now, one of the things that Adam does, and I'm not 100%, uh, I don't use Adam all the time, to be honest with you. I, I typically use Visual Studio, but uh, Adam will go ahead and create this new file, but it has no file type ex you know, extension associated with it. So this thing doesn't know if it's an image, it doesn't know if it's a text file, it doesn't know if it's a Python file, it doesn't know anything. So there's probably a way, I know that you can um, associate file extensions or do some settings and things to, to get it to open up every file as a specific type of file, but you know we might be writing Python files, we might be writing other language files. So I don't really want to associate any new files opened as a uh, Python file. So long story short, when we open this new file and it's called untitled, let's go ahead and just immediately save it. So we'll say uh, control S and then we're going to save it to that new folder that we just created. So Python uh, 35 tutorial and we'll just call this um, first underscore program. And then you want to give it the extension file type. So you're going to say dot .py all Python files are going to end in a .py unless it's compiled Python. Um, then uh, you could see, you'll see PYC. So if it's compiled Python file, it, it is .pyc, but you're typically just going to be using .py files, which is um, short for Python. And that's why everything in the Python world is pi, whatever, even though um, you know, pi is typically P-I-E in the English language. But... Um, 
Pi, so Python, whatever. But <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. And just to give you a quick, quick explanation of what a .pyc file is, because you're going to see when you run your Python scripts that sometimes the Python interpreter is going to create an identical file. So say, in our case, um, our file is going to be called, and this actually got erased, um, we're going to call it first program .py. Um, you'll see when we run it, Python will create a new file called first underscore program .pyc. And all it is is actually compiled bytecode, and bytecode is like machine level language, um, like low level machine language quick. You're not going to have to deal with that stuff, but it's made automatically. Um, and those files can be loaded quicker than, than Py files, but they're not necessarily interpreted or run faster than um, the, the .py file. So anyway, that's the long story short. You really don't need to confuse yourself with it. You're not going to be using it, but in case you were like, well, why the hell did I just get a .pyc file here? That's all that is. Um, you can even erase it if you wanted to. All right, so let's go ahead and say save to create our new and first Python file. So you'll see it's first program.py. Now, because it's now a Python file, Adam knows that it can use um, syntax highlighting that's specifically built for the Python language. What I mean by that is there are certain keywords in the Python language, like print, that we're going to learn. Um, so print, you can see the different highlight formatting, the syntax highlighting. That's called syntax is the actual code that you write, or the coding style. And um, editors are now smart enough to know different languages have different types of syntax, and then they change the colors of certain parts of that, um, you know, those language keywords to make it a lot easier to read, make it prettier and everything. So um, that's what is what it means when somebody says syntax highlighting. So that being said, uh, I want to go back to the way we're going to structure this tutorial. Every program that we write, we're going to use Atom to write it in the Python code, and then to execute it, we need to open up a command prompt. So I'm in Windows. I'm going to open up the command prompt. It doesn't have to be an admin, but I'm just doing that anyway. And then I'm going to CD into the directory where my project is stored. So we put this into um, Python 35 tutorial. And then you can see that the first program.py file is there. Now, one of the things that might confuse you guys, and um, hopefully I'll be smart enough to remind people um, in case they jump into this tutorial, um, in, you know, without re or starting from the beginning, is that I have two versions of Python installed. If I just type Python, it's going to find 2.7.8, which is Python 2 series. This tutorial is all about Python 35, so I need to be able to differentiate which version of Python I'm using. I have Python 2.7 used um, in much more places right now um, so you know maybe I should just change it over you know change Python 35 to be Python uh, the default Python and then change you know Python 27 to be diff you know the spelled out version I may do that in future videos but for right now when we run a Python program we're gonna be running it like that um, at least I will be but most likely if you just have one version of Python you just simply need to say Python and then the name of the file um, that you're trying to execute, which, um, what do we call this? First program is what we call it, dot .py. So you can see that it actually didn't do anything, but it actually did run your program. There's nothing there uh, because there's no code, but uh, that did su successfully run with the version of Python that I installed, which is Python 3.5. So anyway, guys, that's a lot of talking, but let's go ahead and discuss um, you know, how to create our first Python program. Um, just so you know, Python is interpreted from the top to bottom, so meaning code up here is going to be interpreted before code down here. It's going to be interpreted left to right, meaning that if I have code over here, it's going to go top down and then left to right, so this will always be read before this. So j that's, you know, just simply put, um, programs get a lot more complicated than this, but um, just know that everything is executed top to bottom, left to right. And it's pretty much like that in any language I've ever heard of. Um, so that that being said, let's go ahead and um, use that print keyword that we talked about earlier just to write our first program using Atom and um, using the command line. And then I'm going to go ahead and end this video. And in the future videos, um, we're really going to start getting into the Python language. But now that we have a, a unified um, way of, of 
building our, our programs and running our programs. Um, hopefully it'll be a lot easier for you know, brand newcomers to the Python language. So let's go ahead and use this Python special keyword that says print and then in parentheses, that's what these uh, things are called, parentheses, you're going to say in double quotes, hello world. And the reason why is because going back to like the 19, probably 50s or 60s or 70s or God knows when, that was the first thing that was ever taught and written um, whenever you're teaching somebody how to program, um, you just simply say hello world to the screen. There's been times I've tried to get clever and like cuss and stuff, but I'm going to be a little bit more responsible here and just you know go with the typical hello world. To run our program, let's pull up our command prompt, and we're going to do the exact same thing that we did before. We're going to say Python, except I need to say 35. You know what? In future videos, I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to change my default Python to the Python 3 series, so I do not have to do that because I'm sure this is going to confuse you guys, but I apologize for this one particular video. I have to do Python 35. You don't. So I'll press Enter, and you're going to see that it prints out Hello World. Not very impressive, but you actually should be impressed with that because that that is you couldn't get any easier um, writing any sort of program um, to be able to do something like that believe it or not there's quite a bit of code that goes into even having anything know enough about the computer to say hey I need to print something out to the screen well what's a screen what's a command prompt you know the, the computer is already doing so much internal stuff that we don't have to deal with um, and that's why Python is an easy language to learn. All we did was simply write print hello world in parentheses and it printed out to the screen. A lot of languages um, are you know similar in the way that that works, but Python is, is definitely one of the easiest as far as just being able to jump in, write a program, and get it executing. It's not very impressive, and you might even wonder why, well, what the hell would a program need to write to the screen for? But pretty much every program in the world needs to be able to print and it could be things like monitoring bank statements and it's printing to the screen um, alert messages or logging or um, you know any sort of any sort of feedback that you're going to get from the program you're pretty much going to use the print function so it is a, a, an extremely important thing um, and it seems so basic, but it, it's something that is used over and over again in programming languages. Um, you have to be able to, to print things to the screen. And as we get into the tutorial series um, and getting into the much more advanced stuff, I mean, you're not even going to second guess anything like this. Um, you know, just be like, oh yeah, definitely the you know print function in every single language is is definitely an important feature. So that's why it's a keyword. It's a special word in Python. And you can never override that, or you never want to anyway. You would have a world of hurt if you ever did. Um, so anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Uh, I apologize we can't really do this in the idle editor. Um, it's better that you jump into Atom, learn this way, um, uh, learn a, you know, a more production-type tool to help you, um, you know, jump into the Python world. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.